Allah. <coughs> we begin with the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Him. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah ladim. Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa Allahu akbar. We begin with the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I remind myself first and foremost and then everyone in this congregation to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have God consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single thing that we do. And we bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final messenger. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. Brothers and sisters, this is a very, very, very special day. This is a very, very big day, a very big spiritual day, alhamdulillah. It's a Jummah in the month of Ramadan, in the last 10 nights. It's blessings upon blessings upon blessings. It's nur upon nur upon nur. It's expansion on expansion on expansion. And it's there for us. The barakah is there for us. It's just waiting for us. And we just have to strive a little bit. We just have to do a little bit to reap huge rewards, alhamdulillah. We don't even know what the rewards are. Our minds can't even comprehend what the reward is of these special nights, of this beautiful day. But as long as we just do a little bit, we have God consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything we do. We stay away from food and drink during the day. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at night. All of the blessings are there for us, alhamdulillah. Brothers and sisters, in the few minutes that we have today, I wanted to take a step back and kind of think about what we've been doing these past 23 days, right? What we've been doing these past 23 days. Uh, if you go to an individual from another faith community, if you uh, talk to someone who isn't Muslim, and you kind of just explain to them what we've been doing, it's, it's actually, it's quite interesting, right? To think about it. Sometimes we get so focused in the zone this is so normal to us that we, not, we don't realize how this can be very different for people who are not Muslim. So if you go to someone who's Muslim, and, and this is actually why I'm sharing this, it was inspired by a conversation that I had with a non-Muslim colleague or someone from another faith community, and just explaining to them what we do in Ramadan, right? <clears throat> if you explain to them, okay, we get up, right, at like 5 a.m., you know, maybe even earlier, 4.30 a.m., we get up. Uh, most of us, a lot of us will do, you know, a couple of, Rakat of prayer, and then you know we eat, we have our meal, and then we pray Fajr prayer, and then we go back to sleep maybe for a little bit, and then we wake up and we can't have food or drink for the entire day. So I think right now it's about 14, between 14 and 15 hours. So for 14 and 15 hours, we're not eating, we're not drinking, right? We're doing, we're not, we're staying away from food and drink. And they're like, wow, dang, you know, the, the person listening to you will be like, wow, that's a lot. You can't drink, you can't eat. And then, you know, sunset comes, you have a meal, you pray the Maghrib prayer. During the day, you pray your Doha and Asr prayer. Then you pray your Maghrib prayer. You have a short meal, and then you rush off to the masjid. And then you're there in the masjid. You pray your Isha prayer, and you're standing there for about, you know, on, on the shortest, if we're praying eight rakat, it takes about, you know, 35 to 40 minutes, depending on the imam. But that's probably the shortest. You're not out of there shorter than 30 to 40 minutes, right? So you're there. On, for, for the minimum, about 30 to 40 minutes, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, standing in prayer. And then, uh, if you stay longer, you're there for an hour, an hour and a half, and then you go back home, right? And you're doing all of this while working and while studying. This is not a Muslim country, this is the United States of America. Work doesn't stop, school doesn't stop. You still have to get the A on your exam, you still have to meet the KPI at your work. Right? None of this stops. It still goes and they're like, subhanAllah. They don't say subhanAllah. They're like, whoa, what is going on? Like, you guys do this? And we're like, yeah, we do this. And if you, you think about it, if you take a step back, it's quite a lot, subhanAllah. And so why are we doing this? Is it because Muslims are addicted to the pain? We just love the pain, you know, of like staying up all night and leaving food and drink during the day? No, verily, it's the opposite. Most of us here can testify that there's a sweetness that we feel in Ramadan, in this month that we don't feel throughout the rest of the year. That even though we are leaving food and drink in the day and we're standing up at night and leaving our beds at night, we feel something in this month that we don't feel throughout the rest of the year. We feel a, a sweetness that we don't feel throughout the rest of the year, subhanAllah. And this is because we're doing what we were created to do in this month. We're focusing on what we were created, what we're supposed to be doing, which is worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and giving most of our attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we, we taste this sweetness, we feel this sweetness, subhanAllah. 
subhanallah. It's absolutely incredible. So I, I just wanted to take a moment to step back and look from a bird's eye view what we're doing in this month. It's just absolutely incredible what we're doing. Alhamdulillah. And when we leave our food and drink and we leave our bed, our bodies get tired, but our, our soul soars, inshallah. Our soul rises, alhamdulillah. And that's the whole point of Ramadan, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. Ameen. Brothers and sisters, I wanted to talk about, in today's khutbah, where we're going outside of Ramadan, right? Ramadan is about to end. And how we should be thinking about Ramadan. And how we t keep this momentum going outside of Ramadan. So alhamdulillah, Islam can be thought about, uh, can be thought about in two ways, right? There's the hukuk Allah, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then the hukuk al-ibad, the rights of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And mashallah, in the month of Ramadan, many of us are very good at the first part. We're very good with the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are doing the five pillars of Islam that we all know from a young age, right? Fasting 30 days in Ramadan, praying our five daily prayers, giving 2.5% of our wealth. Inshallah, we go to Hajj at some point in our life if we can afford it. And then believing, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. These are the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we're very good at doing this. But it's the other part that we should focus on as we leave Ramadan, which is the rights of the servants of Allah. The rights of the servants of Allah. Ramadan is going to end, but the Lord of Ramadan doesn't end. He's going to be with us. Allah continues. He's with us in every single thing that we do. And so we need to focus on this second part. This second part which is the rights of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rights of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's a beautiful, a beautiful hadith that I want to share. A beautiful hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shares with us. And this is narrated in Bukhari. Abu Huraira radiallahu anh said, I heard the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, say, the rights of one Muslim of another over another are five. They're five. The first is returning the greeting of salam. Second, visiting the sick. Third, attending funerals. Fourth, accepting invitations. And fifth, saying, Yarhamakullah, after one of our brothers or sisters sneezes. So these are the five rights that our brothers and sisters have over us. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrates for us in a hadith. That gives to us in a hadith that is in Bukhari. So let's go through each of these rights. The first, returning the greeting of salam. When your brother or sister says salams to you, we have to respond with wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We can't just ignore them. We have to engage in this greeting of peace, spreading peace. This is the first right. The second right, visiting the sick. If we know that one of our brothers or sisters is sick in the community, we have an obligation of going and visiting them and sitting with them and being with them. Number three, attending funerals. If we know or we hear about one of our brothers or sister who've passed away, we should attend their funeral, be there to support their family, Make prayers for them. Number four, accepting invitations. If we get an invitation, we should try to our, our best to accept. One of the miracles of Rasulullah was that he always used to accept the invitations that he, that he got. And he was a very busy man. He was a master of time management, وسلم, but he used to always accept the invitations that he would get from his fellow companions. And so we also should try to accept within, within reason the invitations that we get from our fellow Muslims. And mashallah, we feel this in the month of Ramadan. Many times there's a lot of dawah that are happening, a lot of gatherings that are happening, and sometimes you actually have to say no because it gets too much and you need to focus on your ibadah. But this is a sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. This is one of the rights of our brothers and sisters that we accept an invitation when it is given to us. And then saying, Yarhamakullah, when someone sneezes, making a dua for them. 
when someone sneezes, subhanAllah. And this is throughout all faith traditions, even here in the West, bless you if you sneeze. This is the last and fifth um, right that our brother and sisters have over us. And subhanAllah, if you look at all of these rights that Rasulullah is telling us that another Muslim has over us, it's all waging beauty, brothers and sisters. It's all waging beauty. It's all beauty. Giving each other peace, spreading peace, that's beautiful. Visiting the sick when they're most vulnerable, that's beautiful. Attending funerals and being support to the family, that's beautiful. Accepting invitations to break bread together, that's beautiful. And then blessing someone, making dua for someone when they sneeze, that's beautiful. SubhanAllah. Our religion is all about spreading beauty. And mashallah, we are very good about, in this month, about fulfilling the rights, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what about the rights of our brothers and sisters? And inshallah, we can follow this hadith as the month of Ramadan ends. We can look at this hadith for guidance and see in our lives, am I, am I following these five things? Am I giving these five rights to my brothers and sisters? Am I spreading beauty? Am I spreading goodness? Inshallah, this hadith can guide us as this beautiful month ends. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. One of the companions of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم asked Rasulullah. He said, O Messenger of Allah, who is the best among the Muslims? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded, and he said, the one from whose tongue and hand the Muslims are safe. This is another hadith, brothers and sisters, that we wanted to share. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, the best Muslim is the one from whose tongue and hand the Muslims are safe. Inshallah, as this month ends, we should be aware of this hadith as well. Are our fellow Muslims safe from us? from our tongues and from our hands as this month ends. Unfortunately, it's very sad to say, but there's some of us in this month that we've left food and drink during the day, but we've still been feasting on the flesh of our brothers and sisters because we continue to talk bad about them. We continue to talk behind their back. We continue to say things they wouldn't like. It's very unfortunate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those people. I mean. The hadith we shared previously about the rights that our brothers and sisters have over us, the five, and how it spreads beauty. Our faith is all about spreading beauty. Spreading beauty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. There's a story that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrates to his companions. There was once a lady who did a lot of ibadah. She stood during the night to pray and she did a lot of fasting. And Rasulullah asked his companions, do you know the fate of this lady? They said, no, Rasulullah, we don't know. He said, this lady is in the hellfire. And she's in the hellfire because there was a cat that she used to tie up. And she used to not let this cat get its own food. And she used to not feed this cat. And so all of her ibadah didn't matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't accept it because she didn't spread beauty. She tortured one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. Similarly, there's another story where there was an individual who did a lot of bad things in their life. They were involved in a very haram uh, job, you could say. And this person was forgiven because they were at a well and they saw a dog that was very, very thirsty. 
And so they filled up their own shoe with water and they gave it to the dog and they showed mercy to this creation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them. We don't know where the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lies. And right now actually there's a video going viral of an, of an imam in Algeria, right? An, an, an imam in Algeria who's leading the Tarawi prayer and a cat jumps up on him in the middle of Tarawi prayer and he doesn't even flinch. If you actually watch the video very closely, for those of you who haven't watched it after the khutbah, Google it. This was actually on CNN, brothers and sisters. This is not just going viral in the Muslim world and the Muslim community. This was on CNN. This imam is leading Tarawi, and this cat jumps on him. And he doesn't even flinch. And if you watch the video closely, he actually pets it. right? He actually stabilizes the cat so it doesn't fall off of him. The cat goes up onto his shoulder, and it gives him a little kiss, right, or a little sniff. And he doesn't even flinch, and then the cat just jumps off. And this video has gone so viral. It's being shared on CNN. The government of Algeria invited this imam to the you know, uh, government offices and gave him a reward. Artists are painting this imam's picture with the cat all over the place. Uh, there's social scientists who are now commenting that this one act, this one video, is doing more to stop Islamophobia than many different efforts that uh, other Muslim organizations have gone, just this little video, subhanAllah. And this is just prophetic care. This is prophetic love. Just, you know, you, why did this video resonate with so many people? This video resonated with so many people, why? I, I, Allah, I don't know 100% why, but you know, you were worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you show mercy to Allah subhanahu wa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, and it resonates with people, especially in a time when there's so much war and so much killing going on that to see religious people show creation, show mercy to an animal, it's beautiful. But the point of these stories that Rasulullah is sharing, right, about these two individuals, is that if Allah's wrath came on someone who did animal abuse. And Allah's mercy came on an individual who showed care to an animal. Then what about when we show mercy to each other? If that's the mercy that comes with animals, what about the mercy that comes with each other? When we take care of our fellow human beings. When we make sure we're okay. When we check in on each other when we come together as a community, when we feed each other, when we visit each other when we're sick. If the mercy is there for animals, imagine the mercy that is there when we take care of each other. And inshallah, that's the mercy, that's the love and the, and the spirit that we can take outside of this month of Ramadan. That the month of Ramadan is ending. Our fasting is probably going to end. Some of us, mashallah, we're going to continue to fast every Monday and Thursday, and those, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those individuals. But a lot of us, let's just be realistic, the fasting is not going to continue. And the praying at night is not going to continue, and alhamdulillah, it's okay, right? We have jobs, we have school, we, we serve our families in other ways. But these things, the fasting and the praying at night is probably not going to continue for many of us. But what can continue is the mercy and love that we can show each other, is the support that we can give each other the prophetic care that we can give each other. I, uh, you know, I actually went on uh, to the Middle East, I went on Umrah a few months back, and um, I actually had a little bit of a hard time, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna you know, sugarcoat it, I had a hard time because I was in the Middle East and um, I was in not just the Middle East, some other Muslim countries as well, and you know, I had a hard time, people couldn't stand in line, <laughs> People didn't recycle. People weren't throwing their trash away. I had a very hard time. I was like, what's going on? Here in the West, in the, in the US, we're on top of this stuff. People stand in line. People know how to drive. People don't cut each other off. People are very polite. But in the Middle East, it's a little, it's tough. I was having a hard time. And so I came back and I, I was having some waswasa. And so I went to one of my teachers. I, was just, I, I shared with him. I said, this is, you know, I'm having this, this issue. And he shared, we talk a lot about, about the golden time of Islam, the golden age of Islam. 
And one of the reasons Islam had such a golden age and was such a force was because we were able to combine these two things. We were able to combine the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rights of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this society, they don't give Allah his rights. The churches are empty, nobody's worshiping, even from an interfaith perspective, right? Forget a Muslim perspective, even an interfaith perspective, people are not worshiping their, you know, following their religions. And they're not even following, let alone Islam. But they got the rights of the servants of Allah down, right? To a certain, there's a work to be done here, but for a, a, a big part, they have it down. Whereas if you go to the Muslim world, we have the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have that on lock, alhamdulillah. The masjids are still full. People are fasting. People are giving their zakat. But the rights of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's, it's a little weaker. And so when Islam was in the golden age, it was because we were able to combine these two things together and we became an unstoppable force. So brothers and sisters, let's go back to that. Let's go back to combining these two things together. We're giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his rights. Let's give the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their rights as well. And if we combine these two things together, inshallah, we can become an unstoppable force for good. And the Muslim ummah is doing a lot more than what that video showed. That video showed a cat jumping on an imam while he was on prayer. It resonated with a lot of people. But what Muslims are doing across the world for each other, for our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan, in Syria, in Palestine, in Pakistan, in India, people don't see it. But there's a lot going on, mashallah. There's a lot of beauty going on. So let's combine these two things together. And inshallah, let's become an unstoppable force for beauty, inshallah. We raise our hands in prayer. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim.